The alumni of the University of Vermont Larner College of Medicine are among the most loyal in the country. First of all, they stay in touch with our college and each other. And they continue to sustain our missions through ongoing engagement and generous donation of their time and financial support. Dr. A. Bradley Soule, class of 1928, was special even among this very special group. His loyalty and dedication to our college completely transformed this institution. In 1937, not even a decade after earning his MD, Dr. Soule led a three-person committee that stabilized the college's precarious accreditation at that time by recruiting more excellent faculty, improving the clinical base, designing a new curriculum, and strengthening our admissions process. These were all vital steps to the college's path to what we are today. Throughout his esteemed career, Dr. Soule served as a teacher, mentor, clinician, and alumni organizer, humbly providing insight and advice to generations of UVM physicians and administrators. Today, we honor an alumnus whose actions emulate Bradley Soule's impactful legacy of dedication to UVM's medical school. I am proud to honor this year's A. Bradley Soul Award recipient, Dr. John McGill, class of 1978. I first met John when I was a young medical student, 22 years old. There are many unique people that we meet in life, but John is certainly one whom once you meet him, you don't forget him. I met John my junior year in high school. After we, we had a college experience, he and I backpacked around the world for a year and a half. We met up really within the first few days of school and became really good friends very quickly. And you could see he just was in love with medicine just like I was. ER medicine was just starting at that time. It really was kind of a new specialty. And he was made for that. I think it was in 1984. He was working with Aramco in Saudi Arabia and he read in some newspaper that Doctors Without Borders was working in Afghanistan. At the tail end of his experience in Afghanistan, he was teaching Afghans clinical procedures in Peshawar, Pakistan. He took the opportunity to visit Pakistan and he was recruited on site by an American NGO, Freedom Medicine, to train Afghan medical workers in the refugee camps. By that time, we were life partners. Then we returned to the U.S. and the French MSF section decided to start an American section, which became Doctors Without Borders. As MSF USA grew, we needed to have an American name and an American figure and a, a trusted doctor who understood the field work. Well, that's how he became the president of MSF. I know him mostly as a dad physician and a family physician, so lots of, hey, this happened, can you help me? He'll always explain and make sure that you sort of understand enough to be able to better care for yourself and better get a grasp on what's happening. But I know that his father, Bishop McGill, was really his world model. I think the College of Medicine helped him, but also my grandfather, uh, who also was a doctor in, at the College of Medicine. So I'd say it's both the college, but the family in the college, and the college as family. Even as an emergency physician, John was always interested in the patient and the outcome. But more than that, he always attempted to reconnect with the patients that would come through an emergency room. He would try to engage them at their home after the fact, which an emergency doc rarely does. And I think it's probably a carryover from his dad. He's a humanitarian back home. It's harder to be an ER doc in a county hospital in Minnesota, he would come back home and sleep four hours and go back to the hospital and still have the patience, still have the curiosity in each individual. These are patients, they are not cases for him. They are people. When I think about John's impact on the Department of Emergency Medicine here at the Meyer College of Medicine, I think back to our first discussions about his values in medicine, the things that you can see demonstrated throughout his entire career. He's charismatic, he's engaging, he's willing to listen and willing to think out of the box and willing to think on big terms and on a big scale. He's visionary 
And if I had to use one word, I guess I would say he's authentic. He was just about the fact that you should really help people in need, provide medicine that was needed throughout the world. It really wasn't about John McGill. It really was about the people that needed this and the countries that needed this. John McGill is the living legacy of Bradley Soul. I happen to have been one of the students in the last class that Dr. Soul taught. I remember being struck by his teaching style, his non-confrontational approach, his clinical acumen, his smile. I think that defines John. I think he's always been loyal to the College of Medicine and has sort of stayed true to himself in his approach to caring. And even though it may seem sort of simple, it's so basic and the actual important stuff, that's the actual priority, that I think just that is so, is deserving. John, congratulations. Your impact on our field of practice in emergency medicine, on the Larner College of Medicine, and on the Department of Emergency Medicine in the past and in years to come, makes you truly deserving of this award, the A. Bradley Soul Award. Congratulations. John, congratulations on winning the A. Bradley Soul Award. Uh, we are all proud of you. Doctor, my sincerest wishes for this celebration. You deserve it and congratulations. Congratulations, John, well deserved. John, I'm so happy to publicly applaud you. You are so deserving of this award, the A. Bradley Sewell Award. You embody his, his values and we are all so proud of you. Congratulations, Dad. Um, wish I was there. <laughs>